Jeff. Jeff Best. That's really your last name? I really am. That's a great one. Oh, and when I was in grade school, they called me Pest and Worst and <laughs> oh, no. all kinds of things. How long have you been in the business? Well, I cut my first stone when I was 10, and I'm 77 years old now, so. Oh, if my math serves me right, that's 67 years. Uh -huh. What a blessing. Well, not all that time cutting stones, but every once in a while cutting stones in a lot of those years. I've cut probably a couple hundred thousand stones in my lifetime. Oh my. So. <laughs> you got, you, I'm sure you got uh, 500,000 more. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm hoping. Can you show us some of your turquoise here? All right, well, this is Sleeping Beauty, and it's not stabilized. Uh, stabilized implies that uh, it has been uh, force-fed plastic to, to make it harder. Uh, this is not stabilized. This is what it looks like uh, when it's cut. Did you cut these yourself? Yes. Great job. And that's another piece there. And this over here is uh, Blue Moon from uh, the Candelaria Hills in Nevada. You can see what that cuts out like. You can see, uh, here's a piece that's got that. Would, would, um, is, is when, what, okay, excuse me. <laughs> is what people call Candelaria turquoise different than Blue Moon turquoise? Uh, well, Candelaria is the area, Candelaria Hills. They, there are various mines in the Candelaria area. So the, this particular mine is uh, the Blue Moon. Is this stabilized? Yes, it is. Did you stabilize it yourself? Yes, I did. I heard you are the stabilizing guru. Well, <laughs> uh, it's taken a long time to learn how to do it and make it work properly, but uh, yes. Turquoise is formed by a process called hydrothermal deposition in which water soaks into the ground into a large area that may be slightly mineralized and when it comes back out of the hot spring uh, the mineral is concentrated. Turquoise is a copper aluminum phosphate and sometimes it picks up iron or manganese or others. Now you can see over here uh, this material is uh, from the Mason Pass area outside of Yarrington and this all came from the same mine but you can see that's greener. Uh, here, let's get a better piece. Uh, well, here we go. You can see this all came from the same uh, same area. You can see this piece in particular. That that uh, green and the brown is uh, from iron that was uh, deposited along with the turquoise. And so the iron makes it greener. Occasionally, you'll find some turquoise is just an incredible deep blue color, and that's because uh, it. Uh, uh, hot mineral solution picked up uh, manganese and deposited it with the turquoise. And turquoise is a replacement uh, material. You can see in this particular turquoise, it filled in cracks in uh, volcanic rock. Oh, wow. And uh, you have to, it's a great black matrix. I didn't know that the black matrix in, uh, in this material was volcanic. Yes, it's a, uh, this uh, brown, brown material here uh, is called rhyolite and it's, it's an iron compound, uh, but this uh, was deposited, this is also a volcanic material, and the turquoise just filled in uh, uh, voids in the uh, rhyolite. And you can see over, over here, for instance, uh, well, I'll take a piece like this, now that's a nugget, and this was formed inside, if you go to Yellowstone, for instance, and you see the uh, hot springs, they've got mud bubbling up around them, and that mud uh, leaves bubbles in the um, leaves bubbles in the mud. The turquoise goes in and fills those bubbles, and that's why you get nodules. Oh, wild! So you can get nodules. You can get. Well, here's another type. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, Easter Blue Mine, which is about uh, two and a half miles from the main turquoise uh, from the main Royston turquoise mine. And you can see this is a rhyolite. You can see how the turquoise filled in a crack in the uh, rhyolite. Oh, fantastic. You can see how it goes all the way through here. It comes along over here. But this was just a, a crack in the rhyolite, and that hot mineral solution bubbles up through that and deposits the uh, turquoise. Would you consider that a vein? Well, that, that would be a vein, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you had that with gold or whatever. Something would be going wild about it. Has that ever happened, in your knowledge? Oh, yeah, it happens. 
And occasionally, very occasionally, you'll find uh, gold and turquoise together. Oh, wow. I've never seen that. And here's this. A lot of people take what they call a ribbon cut. They will cut a, a stone that has this uh, matrix rock, the hard uh, mother rock around it with a stripe right up the center. Fantastic. And here's... I've met people that thought the Royston, like when they cut Royston in ribbons, that they thought the mine was Royston ribbon, but it's actually the cut, not the name of the material. Not the name of the material. No. And this is the same material that uh, just uh, infused into a larger area. That is stunning. And you can see it picked up uh, other little bits and pieces of uh, whatever was in that void. Uh, it picked up uh, the turquoise hardened around it. and. Uh, when they dug it out, but this uh, extra material comes with it, of course. Fantastic. So, what is your favorite material that you have here? Uh, actually, I, I like the Kingman just because it's easy to cut. <laughs> oh, nice. This is uh, number eight from uh, Carlin, Nevada. It's a classic. Uh-huh. An and, American classic. And uh, see, see it here. And these stones all, all are cut from that. Only hundred and sixty dollars a pound. That's like one of the best prices you'll find in Tucson. Well, that's why we try to sell wholesale and we do quite a bit of wholesale business. Uh, this is uh, the Mason Pass outside of uh, Yarrington, Nevada. And you can see how it cuts out. Those blues are just stunning. Uh -huh, that's kind of a beautiful kind of greenish blue. And you said before that these are all the same, so that that green one's just a different variation, huh? Just a different variation, yep. Well, here, let's see what happens. This all came from the same mine. Oh, fantastic. To the untrained eye, someone might mistake that for like a really high quality varicite or something. Something, sure. But that is actually uh, turquoise from this uh, same mine. Let's see if we can find a piece. Okay, this is kind of interesting. All right, notice that uh, it's blue here, it's green here. Uh, uh, well, and you can see the iron. See how it's green on, on this corner, blue on that corner? Here's the green, here's the blue. And you can see how the iron uh, joined with the turquoise and caused it to become green. Fantastic. So that's just a bit, bit of chemistry. Did you cut these up here? Yes, I did. Is this what they call Morenci? No, that is Kingman. Wow, Kingman can have pyrite like that? Oh, absolutely. A lot of Kingman has pyrite. Oh. You know, the Kingman has so many varieties. You know, my whole career, I have, I don't think I probably haven't even seen half of them. I had no idea. I would have bet this was Campitos or um, Morenci. Uh, Campitos is usually a very light green. Um, the Kingman mine, uh, the actual copper mine is closed for copper mining, but uh, there was a family that uh, bought the concession to uh, mine what is left of the mine uh, for turquoise. And that Kingman mine is about nine miles long, so every uh, and that length of the copper deposit, you wind up with everything from a, a dark green color to a, a dark blue color and everything in between. Oh, fantastic! So. Have you been to Kingman, to the Kingman mine yourself? I haven't. Uh, you can't get into the mine uh, yourself, but uh, I have been to Kingman, yes. I thought they would at least let Jeff Best, the turquoise man, visit. <laughs> no, no, they, uh, what happened was, and this is pretty much true of all the mines, uh, the Sleeping Beauty mine closed about six or seven years ago, and that was up near uh, Globe, Arizona. And when these giant copper companies like Kennecott or uh, Newmont uh, Mining Company, when they close one of those copper mines, they generally put up a chain, uh, 10 foot chain link fence with uh, razor wire around the top to keep people out because it's, it's a giant hole in the ground for one thing. And the second thing is people come in uh, thinking they're gonna sneak in there and uh, grab a little bit of turquoise. And what they do is they deal, uh, these mines produce a lot of overburden, um, a lot of tailings. And the tailings, the overburden are loose, but there are pieces of turquoise uh, in the tailings and in the overburden, they just scraped away because it wasn't good enough copper ore. But the people want the turquoise, and so people go in there and they start digging in this loose uh, uh, tailings, and uh, 
tailings collapse in on them and the mining company gets sued by their grieving relatives uh, oh, no. who are in there stealing turquoise. But uh, they get uh, a lawsuit uh, for wrongful death. And so what they do primarily is a 10-foot uh, chain link with the uh, razor wire around the top to keep people out. And occasionally they will lease a whole mine to another company wants the turquoise where they've got the liability. The turquoise company has liability and not, not a big mining company. Sounds like it's happened a few times before. Oh, it's happened, it's happened all over. And one, the biggest enemy of uh, uh, turquoise is copper because they uh, may take out a few pounds of, uh, uh, a few hundred pounds of turquoise, but they take out uh, literally millions of pounds of copper out of one of these big deposits. And the copper is what they're interested in. So a lot of very, very good turquoise has gone right through the crusher. Oh no! That's, that's, wow! That's where probably most of the turquoise is gone, at least in your lifetime and mine, is through the crusher. Oh my! And I guess probably just at the time, at the, the beginning of these operations, it just wasn't on their mind, and copper's the big money. They are aware of the turquoise, but uh, uh, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of turquoise is nothing compared to the uh, multi-millions they get by uh, mining copper. And um, if you look at the mining statistics on some of these uh, large open pit mines, they take out somewhere in the neighborhood a billion tons of copper. The black lines in here are matrix. And uh, that's what, and the lines in this, this is matrix uh, around the little cells of copper, that's matrix. And uh, in the early years of turquoise, uh, from about 1870 up to about 1910, there was a huge worldwide demand for um, just straight blue turquoise. No flaws, no, no other color, just straight blue. And uh, I like it well enough, but uh, when I'm cutting it, it reminds me of just cutting a piece of blue plastic. Mm -hmm. But uh, that uh, is actually the worldwide standard. Uh, most of it came originally from uh, uh, Turkey, which is where, where the word turquoise comes from. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, Tur Tur Turkey is the origin of the word turquoise. Uh, it also comes from Afghanistan, Iran, uh, Iraq. All of that's what uh, used to be called Persian turquoise, right? Persian turquoise, that's right. And then, of course, they discovered it here. And this particular mine is famous for producing just this completely clear blue rock. Stunning. <laughs> wow. If you had to cut for the rest of your life material with or without matrix, what would you pick? Oh, I prefer the matrix. It's more interesting. It's character. Yes, character. <laughs> Yeah, and of course the thing that is uh, most interesting I find is the uh, matrix, the, the, they call this spider web. The little pooling of uh, uh, yeah, spider the bubbles. And you see it over here. Here's what one of these stones looks like. But when you cut that, it'll have that spider web pattern to it. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to have to buy that one. <laughs> I'm putting that one aside. That one. Okay. Navy's behind that one. <laughs> and here's another piece of... Did got... you fill this bucket back up? Yes. Because I was digging through this and I didn't see those. Well, <laughs> I'm uh, buying that. I, I've got another <laughs> whole bucket full of it. I just keep refilling. And here's some green spider web in a nice hard black matrix. Oh, wow. You could cab that and have a natural backing to it. Yeah. That would be a beautiful stone. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this over here? Uh, this is some uh, of the lower quality Kingman. Oh, wow. And did you do the stabilizing on this no, yourself? No, I did not. Uh, I got this in an estate sale from uh, an old turquoise dealer that died back in uh, 92, 18, uh, 1992. And his <coughs> daughter inherited uh, uh, all of his turquoise business and she finally her husband uh, demanded that uh, she make a space in the garage so he could park his car and she called us and uh, uh, sold us uh, uh, several buckets. Uh, oh wow, her uh, probably the just the uh, this is probably a lifetime's worth right there for a normal person. Oh sure. <laughs> um, sometimes you'll see in um, 
when it stabilized like sheets of glue. Would you consider that an inferior stabilization? No, the, you see the plastic that it was uh, infused with right there. See this layer of plastic? Mm -hmm. And uh, no, there are processes where you take uh, material that has a original consistency of the chalk that kids draw on the sidewalk with. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, there's a process where you force plastic into it and penetrate all, uh, all the way through. I have stabilized pieces larger than a football. Oh, wow. And go all <laughs> the way through with the plastic. It's quite a process, but that's, uh, that's what we do. And so a piece like this started out with something that you could draw on your hand with uh, as chalk. And this uh, forces it through, and that was just a little bit of leftover plastic that uh, they used. Um, when when it's um, enhanced, well, when it's stabilized, does, it, does the color get enhanced, like if you dipped it in water or something? The reason turquoise uh, gets a more intense color when uh, it's uh, wetted with uh, water or in case the plastic. Uh, I don't dye the turquoise. Uh, some people do, but I don't. Uh, but the reason the turquoise uh, and other stones take a more intense color when you spray them with water or stabilize them with plastic is uh, if you were to take a piece of that uh, unstabilized uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh, for instance, you take this and touch it to your tongue, it will stick to your tongue. It sure does. Well, that is because <laughs> there, are, there are little micro pores. Uh, little micro pores in the stone and it's absorbing the moisture of the uh, saliva from your tongue and it sticks and when they stabilize it if you take a piece like uh, like that touch that to your tongue now it doesn't stick that's uh -huh. because the micro pores are filled with plastic it's like licking a piece of glass or something uh -huh. and the difference is that uh, the stabilization, either water or plastic, doesn't change the color of the turquoise, but it uh, allows you to peer deeper into the stone and see the natural color that's there. Oh, nice. And so, uh, if this uh, material didn't have that color to start with, uh, or that potential, you wouldn't see any color because any color change, uh, because if it, if it doesn't have the natural color, uh, even closing the pores doesn't uh, change the color. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> um, have you ever heard of this redskin go by another name? Uh, a lot of people sell this from all kinds. The turquoise business is kind of a funny thing. A lot of people choose strange names and sell stuff uh, uh, under different names. Yes, I have seen that happen. And one of the reasons people, this is Chinese turquoise, and one of the reasons people are dubious about Chinese turquoise is because the Chinese really hurt themselves badly uh, when they started uh, dyeing halite. Halite's a soft uh, white material that has a black matrix in it, and it's, it's uh, just as white as a, a bar of white soap, and that's kind of what it looks like. And what they do is they add dye to the resin and they stabilize it, harden the halide, and hardens it. They also put color in it, and so it looks just almost exactly like turquoise. You really have to know what you're looking at to tell dyed halide from turquoise. And that's how why people are so suspicious of uh, buying any kind of uh, Chinese turquoise. There's nothing wrong with Chinese turquoise. Uh, I mean, it's just a rock like any other rock, but it's like turquoise from anywhere else in the world. Uh, but uh, they really sort of ruined their market for several years by selling dyed halite as turquoise. Because the dyed halite, uh, you, you could get the halite for a dollar a pound. Uh, good turquoise uh, runs from a couple hundred pound, a couple hundred dollars a pound, to several thousand dollars a pound, and that's rough. Uh, cut in cabs, it's even more. It comes from everywhere. Some of it comes from Mexico. There are large uh, copper mines that are being opened up in uh, Chile and Peru. Really? All, all, also produce uh, high quality turquoise. I saw a barrel at the at the hotel strip of what was claimed to be Peruvian turquoise. That's probably I what it was. I didn't quite believe it because I've never heard of it before. Well, anywhere you've got a large open pit copper mine, you have the possibility of uh, having a turquoise. In fact,
suspect very likely if you have a, a large open pit copper mine, there will be some turquoise with it. Um, would you, is, is what they call a hubei, okay. is that a hubei, is that Tibetan turquoise? No, that's Chinese turquoise. So they're two different things. A lot of people think they're one and the same. No, Tibet, Tibet is a totally different area than China. Oh, fantastic. Well, the Chinese claim Tibet as one of their uh, subsidiary, uh, as we have uh, uh, Puerto Rico, Puerto and Rico, and uh, Marianas, and some of the other. Yeah, uh, islands. what is it? The Slick Simone Islands. And sure, Samoa is another one. But the Chinese. I can't thank you enough for walking us through and sure. just chatting with all your knowledge. I want to know. Um, can people call you and buy a pound, two, or ten? This is my business partner, Richard, and uh, we do a lot of online business. Uh, he's got a website there, Min Miner's Gallery, and he's got photographs of all the uh, various kinds of uh, turquoise and turquoise beads, and uh, we've got a big website there. You can order from him if they want to place an order. Call Richard. We're a couple of old dinosaurs, <laughs> and we like to speak to people on the phone mm -hmm. because trying to sell something as complicated as turquoise uh, with a few lines of uh, text message just doesn't work very well. Absolutely. And besides, we like to talk to people anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. So. I can't thank you enough, Jeff. You're the best. I love talking to you for the last few days. I've been trying to work up what I'm going to ask you for the video. I couldn't think of anything because you're just so knowledgeable. I felt. Like, I was just gonna let you rip, and you did. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I tried to be coherent. <laughs> Thank you, sir.